I set my hope, Paul said. I tried to put my hope on how I felt, and I felt like I was going to die. I tried to put my hope on what other people would do for me, and they got other people. <laughs> That's like me asking you to hold this pulpit while I preach. That thing is too heavy for you. And some of the stuff that you've been putting on people, platforms, even the economy, is too heavy. So, Paul, man, I feel anointed today. Do I look anointed? I just want to get this message out to you. I know. I see you in Babylonian captivity. But I know. Jeremiah 29 11. I know. Somebody say, I know. Now, this is God speaking, so the inference is you don't know. But I know the plans I have for you. And we know that in all things, this is Romans 8:28. God works together the good and the bad for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. I'm not nervous. I got purpose. I'm not nervous. He's got a plan. I'm not nervous. I've got a purpose. I'm not nervous. He has a plan. I'm not nervous. I have a purpose. I'm here to glorify God. I'll glorify him in a lion's den, in a fire, on on a ship with a storm, or even in a borrowed grave. Jesus said, I'm not nervous. I came for this. I'm God of the storm. I'm God of the grave. And beside me, there is no other. So I set my hope when it got real bad, when it seemed like it was going to be the bottom. I set my hope on the one who is higher. I'm not nervous. I tried nervous. I didn't like it. I tried nervous. It made me irritable. I tried nervous. It made me eat more. I gained 35 pounds being nervous. I tried nervous. It didn't make me a part of the solution. I tried nervous. It made me a critic rather than a contributor. I tried nervous. It didn't change anything. I tried nervous. I'm going to show up at my job, do what I can, cast my vote. Be the dad God's called me to be. I'm gonna be the preacher God's called me to be. I'm gonna be the mom God's called me to be. I'm gonna do my part. I'm not nervous. I'm gonna do my part, but I will not panic. Because I lift my eyes and I set my hope. I lift my eyes. We used to listen to that song all the time. It was a Brooklyn Tabernacle choir. I memorized all of Psalm 121 just listening to that song in the King James. That lady who sang it, she, I can't sing it like she sang it, but she would say, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot. Thy foot to be moved, the Lord which keepeth thee. He will not slumber nor sleep. Oh, the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Upon thy right hand, oh, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul, even forevermore.
my strength. You are the strength of my life. I lift my hands in total praise to Everyone standing. Everyone standing. I have a hope. I lift my eyes. Psalm 121 is called a song of ascent. There were 15 of them recorded in our canon of Scripture for us to read, but they were originally intended for the pilgrims who would make their way to Jerusalem so they would have a song to sing on the way. How many know you need a song to sing on the way to where you're going? Because Jerusalem, city of peace, was set in the hills. and The hills represent hope, but the hills also represent hidden enemies. And when the psalmist is saying, watch this, I lift my eyes to the hills, he might have felt like a tenth grader in a new school, or he might have felt like a nervous father on election day in America, or he might have felt like a, a refugee in another part of the world that would love to be a part of our democratic process. But he's, he's on his way somewhere. He's on a journey. And as he progresses, he lifts his eyes to the hills, the place where his destination is, the place where his peace is, the place where his hope is. He's going to Jerusalem. And on his way, he lifts his eyes to the hills, and he asks a question, from where does my help come? Where is it coming from? I'm not looking over here, over there. I'm not looking to the hills or the Donald. You get it by Tuesday. I'm looking above all of that. And I always, always read the verse like this uh, The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Thank you, Lord. I always look at it. Like he was saying, my help comes from the hills, you know, because God is above and he's a great king. And when Isaiah saw the Lord in the year King Uzziah died, he was seated on a throne high and lifted up. Isn't it funny he was seated on the year the king died? In the year where the nation was wondering what to do, God wasn't pacing the marble floors of heaven wondering what he was going to do next. He was still seated. I came with an announcement today. He's still seated. He's still seated. Had a vision. The throne wasn't vacant, and the one who sat on it was seated. So I always thought he was looking up, and that's that's true. You know, our hope is God reigns above. Did you know that the same God who reigns above sustains beneath? And that's why I'm not nervous. He said, "I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? I have hope in the hills, hardship in the hills." Paul said, I despaired of life, but I set my hope. Both were happening at the same time. My, my hope came from my hardship. Watch this. This is so powerful. This is so powerful. My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. Who are you talking to? <laughs> He's talking to himself. He's having a conversation with himself, telling himself, don't be nervous. I know you see what's in those hills, and you imagine what might be in those hills, and there's boogeymen in those hills, and there might be real danger in those hills. But the Lord is your keeper. And watch this. He's not sleeping. He's not asleep. He knows. He sees. He knows. Not one hair of your head falls to the ground that he doesn't count it. Not one sparrow falls from the sky that he doesn't have a funeral. He knows. Next verse. Behold. It's all about what you focus on. He who keeps the people of God 
will neither slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade. For there to be shade, there must be heat. For there to be hope, there must be hardship. Or else it won't really be hope. How can you know he will deliver you if you don't know that he can? And how can you know that he can if there isn't an enemy in the hills for you to run to him seeking refuge from? I know. I know you're worried about your teenager. I know you're worried about the state of things. I know you're worried. I know you're worried. I know. I know. But the Lord is on your right hand. And this is what spoke to me. I lift my eyes to the hills. That means he's above it. And God is keeping me and sustaining me. That means he's beneath it. And he's on my right hand. That means he's beside me no matter which way it goes. So I'm not nervous. He's great and he's good. He's big and he's near. He's omnipotent and he's imminent. He is God. And I'm not nervous. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.